service and I want to tell you what, why do we all stand and we're going to sing uh, if you're in the book 546 this is I will sing the wondrous story here we go I will sing the wondrous story of the Christ who died for me how he left his home in glory for the cross of Calvary yes I'll sing the wondrous story the Christ who died for me. Sing it with the saints in glory, gathered by the I was lost. I was lost, but Jesus found me, found the sheep that went astray. Through his loving arms around me, drew me back into his way. Yes, I'll sing the wondrous story of the Christ who died for me. Sing it with the saints in glory, gathered by the crystal sea. I was bruised, but Jesus healed me. Faint was I from many a fall. Sight was gone and fears possessed me. But he freed me from them all. Yes, I'll sing the wondrous story of the Christ who died for me. Sing it with the saints in glory. Gathered by, he will keep me. He will keep me till the river rolls its waters at my feet. Then he'll bear me safely over where the loved ones I shall meet. Yes, I'll sing the wondrous story of the Christ who died for me. Sing it with the saints in glory gathered by the crystal sea. All right. Good singing tonight to start off Amen. with. Amen. Brother, Brother Sean, way in the back, if you would open us in prayer, please. Yes, let's pray. Father in heaven, thank you so much for giving us the ability to uh, gather together, uh, like-minded. Uh, thank you for uh, having our mind be in you. Uh, have everything that uh, we learned tonight uh, reflect directly back to you. Thank you for uh, putting us in a nation where it's perfectly uh, legal for us to come and assemble this way. Lord, I, I pray that you continue to protect uh, our nation, continue to protect just our ability to do things like this. Uh, I know a lot of countries out there, uh, you, you can't uh, do this freely with, with, without uh, a lot of uh, uh, logistics and uh, covert operations to try and just come together as like-minded individuals and worship you, Lord. Pray uh, that each and every one of us learn a good lesson tonight. Use your Holy Spirit to teach us, Lord, and have us uh, just learn, 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 and then do, do, do. I love you, Lord, and I pray these things in your Son, Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Let's go ahead and be seated there. Uh, I don't know how many of you caught that or not, but in different song books, the editors, uh, because of some of the lengths of the songs, uh, you'll find some books have different verses than others. And this song that we just sang, I Will Sing the Wonder Story, uh, is, is along that line. There are actually five verses to it. The next to the last verse, I was bruised, but Jesus healed me. That's one of the original verses. Uh, that uh, from time to time in our textbook it's not in our songbook it's not there in others it is but and uh, that's a, a publishing thing uh, but we came across that one a while back and so we put that up there it's a great verse and so that's why that's why we wanted to include that one tonight it's a great verse I was bruised but Jesus healed me uh, but rather than me ramble on like this uh, we're going to go to a, a great tune this is called Day by Day 320 if you're in the book. 320, uh, this is called Day by Day. Is it really? Yeah. Look at that. 
fan, my editor didn't work. Uh, my, my editor was on vacation the day that it's, uh, that's me, I'm the editor. So, okay, so 370, here we go. Day by day, and with each passing moment, strength I find to take my trials here. Trusting in my Father's wise bestowment, I know. get a prayer list. Anybody need one? Raise your hand if you need one. A couple of them. Phil's on the move. Get a little workout going. Let me give you some of the announcements. Uh, we're still collecting the resurrection egg candies if you want to still give. Some have been given. Um, you find that decorated box out there. Please Put your bag of candy in there. That's what we're looking for is bag of candy. Um, individually wrapped, of course, to put in those little plastic eggs. Um, also, uh, men, this is probably, I guess, all the way up till Sunday. You can sign up if you, if you feel like you want to and you're able to go. But the men's retreat is going to be next week. So not, th not tomorrow, but next Thursday, we're going to be heading out. So you got till now, from now till Sunday, to sign up and pay um, and for, for it and uh, get ready. And, and then you start packing, and we're going to have a good time. Men, if you haven't signed up, you still got that last second. You can do that. We'd love to have you. Um, you will not regret it because we're going to have a good time. Um, also, uh, I think we'll have a meeting for that this Sunday after the morning service. So men, get ready. We'll have a quick meeting to, so we'll all be on the same page on what exactly we're going to do and how we're going to do it. Women, you guys can sign up for the women's conference going to be um, coming up. Uh, all the information for that women's conference uh, is on that flyer out on the bulletin, and that's going to be like the week after that. So week after the men go on retreat, uh, again, that women's conference is going to be across town at uh, Maranatha Baptist Church. So women, uh, there's a sign-up sheet out there. If you're planning on going, sign up. Be a part of that. You, won't, you guys will have a good time there. You always do. All right, that's all I have, actually. So... I don't think I have any more. Nope, no more announcements. All right, looking at your prayer list, start with health. Under health, kind of look through there. And um, we're going to try to figure out 
It has, it's two sides. So if you haven't looked at it, there's one on both sides. So flip to the side that says health. Look through there, and we'll start right there. Anybody want to add something on, as far as health is concerned? Or you see something that needs to be taken off or corrected? Let me know, and we'll do that. Take Mark. He doing better? Good. All right. All right. Anything else in our health? We can always go back to it. Yeah. So if I pass by, you just I'm just trying to get you to look through it. Any praises you want to add to that, or I might have missed. All right. Flip it over. We got our salvation request, our list there. Maybe someone got saved. Hey, no. Or add someone to it. Oh, we also got others, the other area. Um, under other, I'll tell you what to add. And I, it should be actually it's added to there, but it because I retyped this and added it. Um, I forgot to tell, tell myself what I added. Um, but under other at the bottom, uh, Desiree's dad is here, but Desiree's dad is not doing well in the adjustment of being here. So that's where Desiree is at, helping him kind of get through some stuff right now as far as adjustment is concerned. So that's where she's at tonight. Renee, uh, uh, well, Pete is not feeling well, uh, but Renee is asking her brother-in-law, Don Derrick, he's been in and out of the hospital. He's got pneumonia and AFib. So maybe some other complications as well. But so we keep them. Those are the things I added there. Any, anybody else that you see anything else? Uh, you, the Texas uh, wildfire that's uh, apparently the biggest in Texas history. Pan? Are you just going to die Really? Yeah. I thought I had that on here. I'll put it on there. I thought they were getting that under control, no? That may be. My information's been a couple weeks ago. Oh. I don't know if anybody's ever been to the panhandle. That's, that's not a good place to have a big fire. That'll blow that fire everywhere. <laughs> That's the problem, yeah. All right. Anybody else? Anything else? Going through unspoken? Any unspokens want to add to this? Military. I think I got everything else on there. Everything look good? Well, y'all are easy. Worked out good. All right, well, let's go to the Lord in prayer, and then we will. Um, then we can get to our message. Our most gracious heavenly Father, Lord, we thank you, we praise you, Lord, for this wonderful time that you've given us. Here we are at the middle of the week, Lord, once again, able to come into your house, able to encourage one another in prayer, lift each other up, and Lord, just get into your Word, and Lord, hear what you'd have for us, and Lord. We need your Holy Spirit every step of the way. Lord, may you be with us. Lord, may you help us to, um, Lord, uh, be able to do just that. Lift each other up. Be able to pray for one another. Lord, be able to take the message that we hear today. And Lord, be able to apply it to our lives. Lord, just to grow and know you more. And Lord, to be used by you more. And, and to be the light we need to be in this community that surrounds us. And Lord, in thinking about lifting each other up, we, we lift up to you so many health concerns. Um, we think about Jane and Fred Gibbs. We think about Jerry Sexton and, and Mike uh, with his blood sugar. Lord, we lift them up to you. Lord, may you change those situations. We already hear that they're starting to get his blood sugar under control. So, Lord, thank you for that. And Lord, may you continue to bring healing. We lift up Andreas and his health. And Lee and uh, Phyllis Blevins in their house and Lee's skin cancer, we put it before your throne of grace. We ask for your healing touch. Lift them up, heal them, give them comfort, give them peace. Lord Renee, for her uh, healing from her surgery, thank you so far for healing her the way as far as she is. But Lord, may, 
May you continue to heal her. May you continue to strengthen her. And Lord, we also lift up to you her, um, uh, her brother-in-law and, uh, and his, and his uh, pneumonia and aphid that he's dealing with. Lord, we put him before your throne of grace. Lord, we ask for healing. Think about Dale, Dale Hewling with his blood pressure and related health. We lift him up before you. We think about Jesse's mom uh, with her mental health. And Jeremy uh, Batter and, and that growth that's on his chest. Lord, watch over the doctors and help them to find what they need to find, do what they need to do, Lord, that he's able to find healing, Lord, in, in you. And Lord, in, um, Lord, just comfort and peace in you. And Lord, we think about Doug Roberts. We thank you for his healing and he's doing better. But Lord, may you continue to help him, to strengthen him and encourage him. David Lewis, and with his cancer, Lord, we ask for continued healing. And Lord, lift him up to you for comfort and peace. Think about Monica Cossie and her situation. And we think about uh, Amber's boss, Stacy, with her breast cancer. Lord, we lift him up before you, Lord. Help her to be an encouragement to her boss. And Lord, we think about um, Rachel Bruners with her kidney issues. Lord, we uh, ask for your healing touch, Lord, for comfort and peace. We think about Cassidy's father, Charles Baxter, with his dementia. Lord, again, for healing. Lord, may you continue to work uh, in him and bring comfort and peace. And Lord, we think about Jesse's surgery, recovery. Lord, we um, thank you for it going well. Lord, may you continue to help him to recover. Angela's Don, dad, Don, uh, Lord, recovering from his knee surgery. We think about um, uh, Jean Baker's daughter, uh, Lena, uh, with her broke, uh, with her leg, Lord, and, and that recovery there. Lord, lift him up to you. Lord, may you continue to strengthen him and heal him. Stacy's son's health, Lord, we lift him up before you. And Lord, may you continue to heal him and Earl's mom with her knee replacement, Lord, we put that situation before you. And Margarita Hernandez's health, heart, Lord, we put up, her up to you. Lord, we think about Betty and her mom and pastor, Lord. Lord, you know that situation. Lord, may you bring healing, comfort, and peace in everything in it, and in everyone. Lord, we think about Mark's uh, co-worker with lung cancer. Um, we think about Walter Lang and, and, uh, um, and everything he's having to deal with. Lord, we put him before you. You know exactly where he's going and what he needs, Lord. Lord, may you bring comfort and peace and healing. Carla's mom, Margaret, uh, may you continue to help her to recover. And we think about Jasmine's mother with cancer. Thank, we thank you for her doing better. May you continue to help her to do better. Earl Cossie with his teeth situation, we put it before your uh, throne of grace. Lord, we ask for your intercession on his behalf. Lord, also Earl's dad with diabetes. And uh, we think about Wayne uh, Blevins uh, testing for the prostate cancer and everything going on there. Lord, guide the doctors and the nurses. Help them to do what they need to do, Lord, to help bring healing to them. And Lord, nevertheless, let them know that you're right there with them. And though we think about Ashley's grandmother in the hospital, uh, or back from the hospital, uh, recovering. And Lord, may you be with her and help her to continue to recover. Lord John's mother, Wendy, as she's recovering from surgery, and Jill's mom, uh, Bonnie, that's recovering from uh, surgery, Lord, may you uh, continue to re help her recover. And also Jane uh, Gibbs recovering, Lord, may you continue to bring, uh, Lord, continued strength and healing, Lord, we put them before you. Thank you for the visitors that have come so far. Thank you for all the church ministries. And Lord, may you continue to bless us and help us to grow. Lift up to you so many uh, salvation needs. We think about Mark Broadway and Broadway family, Japan and Billy Bertolotto and Jack and Lord, we think about Rhonda and Paul and Christine and Chris, C.B. Baxter, Sandra Youngblood and her family, and Allison's sister and her family, Hope and Jerry, Lord, and Tanya Dankert and, and Andreas' co-workers. Lord, we lift them before your throne of grace. May you continue to bring witnesses before them that give them the truth of your gospel, Lord, then draw them through your Holy Spirit to your salvation, Lord. We know it's only going to be through you. Lord, may you intercede, and Lord, um, may we see lives saved. And Lord, we lift up to you, Sarah and Charles, with their staff house situation. And those still recovering from the Hawaii fires and the Panhandle fires, everything that's going on there, we put it before you. Lord, Stacy Teichelman's family issues, we ask you to intercede. And Lord, Betty and her mom and Maria, Christopher and Nikki, uh, Pastor, we, we know that you know exactly what they need. Lord, may you, be, may you intercede, may you guide them and direct them. Those in ministry education, help them to continue on and continue to grow in that education. Cassidy's brother and his job search, help him to find the jobs best for him and his family. Lord, we think about the teen girls Bible study. What a, what a blessing. Lord, may you continue to open hearts and minds and bring them closer to you in every way. And Lord, we think about Do Scotty's daughter and grandson, Maria, 
and Stephen. Lord, lift them up to your throne of grace. Lord, may you guide them and direct them. Desiree's dad and the situation there. Lord, may you be with her, encourage her, strengthen her. And Lord, may you settle his mind. And Lord, help him to, um, Lord, just to adapt and adapt quickly. And Lord, we lift up the whole family to you. Think about Renee's brother-in-law, Derek, again. Lord, we think about him. And Lord, we lift him up to your throne of grace. And Lord, we think about Natalie's, uh, those that are uh, dealing with addiction. Natalie's sister, Shelly in Rockport. Cassidy's sister, Sherry. Carolyn's son, Mark. Tyra. Um, friend Corey and, and Daniel. Lord, we lift up to you. Lord, may you change their situations, help them make decisions that bring honor and glory to your name. All the unspokens we put before you, Desiree, Andreas, Natalie, Rhonda, Valerie, Tony, Lucy, Hazel, Emily, and Earl. Lord, may you work your way in their life. And Lord, guide them and direct them and draw them close to you. Lord, watch over those at the border. Keep them safe. Help us as a nation, Lord, to return back to you. Lord, again, we thank you for the church this, the building project, Lord, we put it before your throne of grace. Lord, we ask for your timing, Lord. All right. Find your way to Deuteronomy. Deuteronomy in chapter 7. You know, a lot of people don't preach through Deuteronomy that much, in the numbers either, but I kind of like the book. There's a lot, of good, a lot of good stuff here, and this is one of them. I like Deuteronomy 6, and so this is... Um, Deuteronomy 7, as we go right through it, um, it's just full of more good stuff. Um, you know, in this chapter, we see how God gives Israel their battle plan uh, for victory over their enemies. And that's why I got my little sword. And, of course, you got the Bible and the cross, everything you need for a good Christian battle. Amen. Um, and the same, here's the thing. God gives them this battle plan and the same precepts that God teaches um, here, the, ch the Christians today can apply it to their life in Christ and find victory over our enemies that surround us today. That's a wonderful thing that we overlook when it comes to the Old Testament. It's not just for them. These same truths are transcendent through time and, and apply to us even today. So you can count on these same promises, a lot of the same promises. Some are meant for them, but you, we, the, God works in the same ways. Now, here's the thing. I was thinking about this, and I ran across this story by a guy named John Al, uh, Al Alice. Walking through the park, and he passed by this massive oak tree, and the vine had grown up along the trunk. The, he said the vine started small, uh, nothing to bother about, but over the years, the vine had gotten taller and taller. And by the time he had passed by that day, the entire lower half of the tree was covered by the vine's creepers, those little sprouts coming out from the vine. And the mass of tiny feelers was so thick that the tree looked as though it had innumerable bird's nests all around it. You just imagine. The tree was in danger. Um, this huge solid oak was quite literally being taken over. The life was being squeezed from it. Now the gardeners in the park, they had seen the danger and had taken a saw and severed the trunk of the vine. One cut right across, right through the middle. Now the tangled mass of vine and branches still clung to the oak, but the vine was now dead. That would gradually become uh, plain as weeks passed and the creepers began to die and fall away off of the tree. Now, kind of imaging that, after seeing what happened to this tree, it got me to think how easy it is for sin, which begins so small and seemingly insignificant, to grow until it has a strangling grip on our lives. And yet, Christ's death has cut the power of sin. Amen. Yes, the, the creepers of sin still cling and have some effect, but since power is severed by Christ and gradually sin's grip dries up and falls away, there is victory through Jesus Christ. Amen? Amen? No matter how hopeless and helpless you think things are in this world, Christ has the victory. That's what I love when it comes about the power of the gospel message. You know, in this chapter in Deuteronomy, God, gave, God gives three steps. I broke it down, three-step plan for victory. Uh, and the first step is to know your enemies. 
Uh, boy, what a, what a first step. You've got to know your enemies. If you would, uh, let's stand uh, for the reading of God's Word. We're going to read in, in Deuteronomy 7, just a little bit, starting in verse 1. It says, And the Lord thy God shall bring thee into the land whither thou goest to possess it, and hast cast out many nations before thee, the Hittites and the Girgashites and the Amorites and the Canaanites and the Perizzites and the Hivites and the Jebusites, Seven nations, greater and mightier than thou. And when the Lord thy God shall deliver them before thee, thou shalt smite them and utterly destroy them. Thou shalt make no covenant with them, nor show mercy unto them. Neither shalt thou make marriages with them. Thy daughter that thou shalt not give unto his son, nor his daughter shalt thou take unto thy son. For they will turn away thy son from following me. And they may uh, serve other gods. So will the anger of the Lord be kindled against you and destroy thee suddenly. But thus shall ye deal with them. Ye shall destroy their altars, break down their images, cut down their groves, burn their graven images with fire. You can be seated. Thank you so much. So, right off the bat, God is talking to Israel here. And he's starting this plan. Israel is told here about seven nations that currently occupy the pla- the uh, and plague the promised land. That's pretty much what God talks about about them. So they're not in the promised land yet. They're getting ready to go in the promised land. But he's already telling them, "Look, this is what exists there. This is what you. This is the enemy that's there. You need to know them. You need to understand them. That's this is who you're going to deal with to get the promised land." And just to kind of go through it, as best history as can tell us, um, I found out when it comes to these seven nations, first of all, you have the Hittites. The Hittites, they were the earliest groups uh, that we know of in the Promised Land. They were there in the time of Abraham. Um, they are believed to have migrated from where Asia Minor, where you might see if you, if you have a map. I don't have it on, on me right now, but a map where you know where... All the seven churches of Revelation are, the age of Meyer, that would be that place. Um, a lot of it's now Turkey now, that, from that area, and they, they migrated down. Now, then there were the Canaanites and the Amorites. Now, these two groups were kind of intertwined in, in, within every group of the promised land. Uh, the term Canaanites later became ju- a generic term for all the people of the land. Um, this is why the land itself is called the land of Canaan for that reason. Um, Canaan was, uh, uh, if you remember, the son of Ham, who God cursed because of the sin of Ham. And so if you think about it like that, when you think about the Canaanites, that came from Canaan, and that brought with it the curse that came from Ham and his sin against Noah. And um, God kind of has some... I mean, he's cursed all the people. So you can see the, the contrast from all these people and their relationship with God. It kind of gives you a little bit more perspective of why God said these people need to go and why he's, he's so against them. Then there was the Girgashites. We, we, there's very little that we know about the Girgashites, um, either in Scripture or in history books. Uh, but there are the Jebusites as well. The Jebusites, they, they have thought of been the, they were the group that broke off from the Hittites. They are known to be occupied around the mountain villages around the city of Jebus, which became known as Jerusalem. Now we know Jerusalem. So now, now if you know Jerusalem, now you know where they were, where, where they are. Then there's the Perizzites, not to be confused with parasites, although maybe you could confuse them with that, parasites. But there's the Perizzites. Appeared that they appeared to live around the area of the hill country later that became known as Judah and Ephraim. So that's where they're from. And then, of course, the Hivites. Uh, they lived around the area of Mount Hermon up north of the Sea of Galilee. So that kind of puts them all together. It gives you an idea of where all these people were and all the troubled spots that they would run into. Now, these have been pointed out by God through Moses as the biggest threat to Israel. And they are described in a way that reminds me of cancer today. I mean, if you were diagnosed with cancer today, and you ignored that, not, that, that diagnosis, you would surely die of cancer. 
You're told it's there, you don't do anything about it. That's just that's the way it is. Now, if you were diagnosed with cancer and you decided, you know, I am going to do something about it. I need to help myself get rid of it. And you went to the doctor, you said, let's, let's take care of this. You wouldn't be satisfied if the doctor said, all right, we can get rid of 10%, but not 90%. And that's not good. Or maybe say, oh, no, all right, all right, we'll get rid of 50% of the cancer, but we'll leave the other half. You probably wouldn't be satisfied with that either. You probably wouldn't even be satisfied if you said, we can get rid of 90%, but you're still going to have 10% cancer on you. You probably wouldn't like that idea either. So none of that sounds good. The only thing that sounds good is we want 100% of that cancer gone. Amen? I mean, that's, what, that's what's going to make you feel good. That's what's going to make you excited. You don't want to hear something's going to get left over. Because you know what that probably is going to mean. You want to hear, I'm cured. I'm done. It's gone. So that's exactly what we see here. Well, the, the children of Israel were commanded by God to wipe out all their enemies, including the women and children and the idols even, and all their gold and all their silver. You get rid of it all. Destroy it all. Don't leave not even 1%. Take it all out, kind of like cancer, eradicate it off the land. That's basically what God said. He wanted them gone, totally gone. Now, I get some of the things, but it kind of then brings up a question up, and I'll, I'll ask you this. How can leaving women and children around and even gold and silver harm them? Why do you think he gave them that kind of command? What would be the harm in leaving that? Anybody got a clue? What do you think? He's guessing. Go ahead. Influence. And that's what he said. You remember what, remember what we read? He said, if you leave them, they're going to take your sons, they're going to take your daughters, and they're going, to, they're going to create the wrath of God to become on you. That's basically what they said. Because if they left any of these people... Like cancer, they would defile their, their worship and they would draw them into idol worship. Now, we know what happens. We, we've read through the rest of the books. We know they don't eradicate, the, eradicate them, and this is exactly what happens. They end up in idol worship. So, without a spoiler alert, we'll just keep on going. Here's the other thing. Why did he then also tell them, well, get rid of all the idols, get rid of not even that, all, all the gold, all the silver? Why would you have to get rid of that? Idols, easy. Yeah, get rid of the idols. Now, later on, you're going to find out what they do with the gold and silver is they melt it down and do their own thing. Why would they, why would they be told to do that? Same reason. You think about it, they've got all those images probably on everything they made. So don't, we don't even want to keep something that even has an image. Of all that idol stuff, of all that stuff, burn it down, get rid of it, get it out of there, burn it down, redo it, get it out, clean it up. That's pretty much the, what he's telling them to do. Now, having said that, I've got that in your mind, you, you've got that going. Having said that, we know that there were exceptions that God made to this rule, where God allowed them to spare some of the people. We don't have to go very far into Joshua when they actually go into the promised land and they get to Jericho and they do their thing around Jericho. But before they even do that, they ran into a lady named Rahab. Remember that story? Rahab is a Canaanite. She was in that land. Her and her family were spared. They were not just spared, but Rahab ends up marrying a man named Salmon after, after that. And Rahab and Salmon, they have a son named Boaz. Boaz marries Ruth. Boaz and Ruth have Obed. Obed has Jesse. Jesse has David. She was in the lineage of Jesus Christ. Isn't that awesome? You know, this was only made possible because Rahab's faith in God over her own people. 
If you remember when the spies came in, she said, I'm believing you're God. I heard the stories and I believe them full, full. And I'm going to hide you here. I'm going to protect you. She did it. And because of that, she even betrayed her own people. They came looking and she lied to them. Said, no, they're gone. They weren't here. She protected. She lied to her own people, betrayed her own people, and protected the people of God for God because of her faith in God. And God changed her. God protected her and her family. Saved them from Jericho. Those are the only survivors of Jericho. So now likewise, when we think about this, we as Christians, let's apply it to ourselves. We as Christians are to know our enemies. Did you know you have enemies? Name some of the enemies we face today as Christians. Off the top of your head. And no, it's not the Gergesites. Flesh, all right. I'll take that. Yep. Yep. I'll give you a couple of them. I wrote down. We have a, our main enemy is someone we actually can't name. Satan and his demons. If it, when, it, when we think about the spiritual world, that is our only enemy. There is no ghost out there. You, when you die, you're either going to heaven or hell. The only spiritual, but there is a spiritual enemy. And it's Satan, and, and he's got an untold amount of demons. They're out there, and they're influencers. And because of that, we have sin. We have flesh also as well. And that kind of brings us to, like, yeah, I think about alcohol and drugs. You know, that, that's still a debate in, the, in churches today. We, we, we debate that on whether we should engage in it or should not engage in it. I'm just going to bring, bring it like this. I'll tell you this. Throw everything out and think about it like this. Alcohol and drugs are the most destructive force in this world today. They kill more people than anybody else anything else. They destroy more families, more marriages than anything else. Amen. Yet we as Christians are debating whether or not we should engage in it. Amen. That's just a thought. I'll let, you, I'll let you go there and go to the next thing. Here's the next thing. Here's the next thing. So you, you think that's odd? All right. We also have a sexual sin problem. It's getting worse, isn't it? In fact, we think about pornography, adultery, and homosexuality. I don't know if you know this or not, but there is debates in churches today whether or not it's okay to have engage in pornography and homosexuality. You know, churches that embrace that. Whether and the and the word of God says otherwise. People are debating that in in the Christ, in churches. I'm not going to say Christian. I, I, I don't know if I'd say that, but they say Christian, and they're debating whether or not that's good to, to engage in that. That's where we're at today. It's not just out in the world. It's not in some dark alley. We're engaging in this in the churches. How about bad language? You know, I've told this story before, but there's actually youth directors in churches today that are cursing with their young ones because they say, well, that's the language. And we, and we gotta be like the people. Mm -hmm. So they're cursing right along with their kids. What are we teaching our kids? Amen, you think I'm lying? I'm not lying. There's a lot, you'll find that in a lot of churches. We're engaging, so everything I just listed up there, we're having issues in the church. We shouldn't be like that. We ought to realize our enemy. We ought to realize that there's an enemy out there that wants to take us down in every way it can. Yes, sir. <clears throat> we, ought to, we ought to take it to the point where when, we, when we're able to identify the enemy, it, it becomes easier to get them out of our lives, Amen. which is what God's word tells us to do. Stop trying to figure out should I, should I, or should I, should I not. Just say, you know what is bad? I probably shouldn't. I just get down. Amen. Just get down. It's doing me no good. There's not anything I listed up there that you can say, man, that has really changed my life for the better. Not one thing. You know, now unlike religions like Islam, the Christian's enemy are not people physically. Not the actual people. But the actions of certain people. Yeah. 
that we need to identify and know in order to avoid. Let me help you out with that. Romans 16, verse 17, is talking to a Christian. It says, I, now I beseech you, brethren. This is Paul. He's talking to brethren. He's talking about Christians. Mark them which cause division and offenses contrary to the doctrine which ye have learned and avoid them. You're not looking at a person. I don't care what they look like or where they're from, but what are they doing? That's what he's saying. And he's not telling you to do anything. Just avoid them. Understand the actions of people and know who to hang around and who not to hang around. Amen. See that destructive behavior. And here's the thing. When you see that, you need to realize, I just need to do what God's word says. Amen. And the more you do what God's word says, here's another thing you need to know. If I were just to get focused, if I were just to say, I'm going to forget what everyone says, I'm just going to say, you know what? I'm going to go and learn what God's word says. I'm going to read it. And whatever it says, I'm going to do it. And, and I'm going to put my, put my walk towards the word of God. Did you know that Christ himself said, if you would just have that attitude, those other people, you would figure out their true colors and they will actually get away from you. Yeah. Amen. <laughs> They'll stop hanging around you. That's, right. That's what Christ said. He said in Luke 6, verse 22, blessed are you when men shall hate you and when they shall separate from their company and shall reproach you and cast out your name as evil for the son of man's sake. In other words, people are going to look at you and say, hey, hey man, you want to come over here? We're going to, we're going to go down to the bar. We're going to hang out. Oh, I don't do that. I, I'm not going to do I, I can't do that. I'm sorry. I, I'm convicted I do that. Or, hey, hey, come over here. We're, we're going to have this gossip session. Over there. No, I'm not going to get involved in that. Hey, that's a tough call. There's people that are going to tell you to do something. You're going to like, mm, I don't know. That does it. I'm reading the word of God. It's speaking to me. I don't think that's where I need to be. I don't think that's what I need to do. I'm going to do what I, the word of God says. And those people in those areas, you know what's going to happen? They're not going to ask you anymore. Amen. You're not going to be their BFF. company. They're going to separate themselves from you because you're not doing what they're doing. Amen, brother. You're going by the convictions that the Word of God puts on you and you're trying to follow the Word of God. My friend, if you do that, you'll avoid a lot of trouble. In fact, we're also warned not to have close relationships with people that absolutely don't believe in Christ. Amen. Not, just, not just marry them, but even have good friend relationships hanging out all the time with people that just don't know Christ. You want to you be a witness to them, but hanging out with them is, one, is different than being a witness. Being a witness is, hey, I'm a friend, I love you, here's the truth. But hanging out is going where they're going, doing what they're doing. You see what I'm saying? And 2 Corinthians 6 verse 14 says, be ye not unequally yoked. That's being yoked. Hanging out, I'm going to be yoked. Just like a, a cattle is yoked to a cart, you're yoked to these people. You're hanging out with them, you're doing things with them. Don't be unequally yoked together with unbelievers. For what fellowship has righteousness with unrighteousness? What communion has light with darkness? Especially marriage, you're yoked. <laughs> Don't get in a situation where you are going to be more influenced by someone who doesn't know Christ. You want to be lifted up. Know your enemies. Secondly, so first step in our victory is to know your enemies. Second step is to know your strengths and weaknesses. Now, in verses 6 through 16, I won't, I won't read through all that, but as you read through all that, we find out Israel's strength is their God. I'm going to help you out with that. That's our strength, too. Amen. Without the presence and protection of Yahweh, God, they would have no chance of victory. You would have no chance of victory. We need God in every step of the way. Amen. Amen. God reminds them here that they are his chosen people. To have his presence and protection. They are his chosen people, not by their faith. That's not. They, but by God's promise to their father Abraham. Amen. That's why he calls them that. God is true to his promise to, to Abraham that he will never leave his descendants. He will never leave them. And he will bring them to the promised land. That's his promise. He made it to Abraham, not to the people. But they're, 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 they're going to reap that benefit. 
So the sins of Israel will never remove them from the promise God made with Abraham. Which is a nation uh, that is going to be great. He told Abraham, you're going to be have a, a multitude. that It's going to be a nation. It's going to be great. And it includes remaining in the promised land that God gave them. I'm going to give you a land. They're going to be a nation. They're going to be great. And they're going to be a multitude that's going to be great. He promised it to Abraham. So regardless of, of what his children do or don't do, God's going to bring them where he told Abraham he's going to bring them. You understand God's word is true. Amen. So now thinking on that. Having said that, there are people today that say God no longer is protecting Israel and no longer blessing people that bless Israel and cursing people that curse Israel. All because Israel didn't accept Jesus as their Messiah. So, let me ask you. How do you believe that? No one's raising their hands. No, no I'm not going to do it. I'm going to say no, that's not true. Based on the word of God. Because those promises are always about the promise he made to Abraham, Amen. which will never be diminished. It had not been diminished. It will not be diminished. It is not going to be diminished. In fact, there are many Old Testament prophecies and New Testament prophecies that still proclaim that one day the nation of Israel as a whole will accept uh, Jesus Christ as their Messiah along with the church and they will reign and rule with the church in the millennial reign. You say, where do you get that? Well, you can go back to Ezekiel chapter 36 and verse 27 and 28. Ezekiel tells us, and, and you can look at the context of Ezekiel, and he says even more. I can tell you a little bit more about that, but he says this. I think this is telling. I will put my spirit within you. He's talking about Israel. I will put my spirit within the individuals of, it, of Israel. And cause you to walk in my statutes, and you shall keep my statutes and do them. And ye shall dwell in the land that I gave to your fathers, and ye shall be my people, and I will be your God. He goes on to talk about how he, he takes their stony hearts away. He indwells them and gives them a heart of God. He changes them. In other words, they're going to be born again. This is something that the Israel had no idea. They didn't have the indwelling spirit. This was, a, this was the mystery the Bible talks about. They looked at this, this thing and they're like, what is he talking about? He's going to put a stony heart. What's going to happen there? They didn't understand what's going to happen when you give your life to Christ now. Now that redemption has been made, you give your life to Christ, he puts his Holy Spirit in you, Amen. you get a new heart. Yes, sir. The old heart's gone. He changes you, in other words. That's what he meant. That's what happens to not just the church, but anybody that gives their life to Christ. We also know when you get to the book of Revelation that 144,000 Jewish believers, 12,000 from each tribe of Israel, will be gathered together during the tribulation period and protected by Jesus Christ himself. And used to be witnesses during the tribulation period. And these men represent the entire 12 tribes of Israel. So you see a representation of the 12 tribes of Israel coming to know Jesus Christ as their Savior and protected by Jesus Christ during the tribulation to be his witnesses. And finally, according to you go back to Ezekiel, they will inherit that land. God's throne, Jesus Christ, according to the word of God, he'll sit on David's throne. He promised Amen. that to David. Amen. So he's going to make his throne. He's going to sit right there in Jerusalem. And Israel's going to be surrounded. Of course, we'll be up in that square, four square city. And we'll be ruling. According to the eschatology, which is the end times. So just as God's word is true for the Jewish people, who would give their lives by faith to Jesus Christ, uh, his word is true for you and I today. In that, he will never leave us nor forsake us. Because we are covered by the very blood Jesus spilled on Calvary's cross. Amen. Ephesians 2 verse 13 tells us, But now in Christ Jesus, ye are sometimes were far off, are made nigh by the blood of Christ. You give your life to Christ by faith, his blood draws you close to him in a personal Amen. relationship. We are not just covered by the blood of Christ. I don't know if you know this or not, but when you give your life to Jesus Christ, the word of God says he indwells us with his spirit and tells us that we are now bought by the blood of Jesus Christ. 1 Corinthians 6, verse 19 and 20 tells you and I this. What? Know you not your body is the temple of the Holy Ghost, which is in you, <laughs> which you have of God. You're not your own, for you were bought with a price. Therefore, glorify God in your body and your spirit, which are God's. Yes. 
He bought you with the blood of Christ. You gave your life to Christ, you're covered. Amen. You're a part of the family of God. The believer's strength today is only found in Jesus Christ, who will strengthen our spirit as we learn to be obedient to his word. But the believer needs to always remember that while we are still living here on this, sin, this world of sin, death can and still, uh, the sin and death, uh, sin can still take us away from the things of God and still cause bad consequences in our life. You know, when the believer falls into sin, God brings chastisement. Why? Because you're a believer. Yes. That's a sign of a true believer. You're, you're giving your life to Christ. You've been bought by the blood of Christ. You can still fall into sin, but God's going to ch chasten you right. back to him. Yeah. Why? Because you're now his child. Right. He will not let you continue in sin. That's why Romans 6 says, you, God ch uh, saves you forever. Does that mean you can just continue in sin? Oh, God forbid. <laughs> God's going to change you. Amen. He's going to draw you back. In fact, that's what Hebrews 12 verse 7 says. If you endure chastening, God dealeth with you as with sons. For what son is he whom the father chasteneth not? We're also told in Galatians chapter 6 and verse 7 and 8, Be not deceived. God's not mocked. For whatsoever a man soweth, that shall he also reap. For he that soweth to the flesh shall of the flesh reap corruption. You're going to reap some... You do the fleshly things of sin, you're going to reap corruption. But he that soweth to the spirit shall reap... Uh, uh, shall of the spirit reap life everlasting. What you do for God lasts forever. What you do in this world and for your flesh is just going to burn in this world. It's not going to amount to anything in your life. So you need to know your enemies. You also need to know your strengths and your weaknesses. Amen. God is your strength. Your flesh and everything that's attached to it is your weakness. Yes, but then you need to know where victory is found. I want you to look at verse 17. He says, And if thou shalt say in thine heart, These nations are more than I, how can I dispose them? Thou shalt not be afraid of them, Amen. but shalt well remember what the Lord thy God did unto Pharaoh and unto all Egypt. The great temptations which thine eyes saw, and the signs and the wonders and the mighty hand and the stretched out arm whereby the Lord uh, thy God brought thee out. So shall the Lord thy God do unto all the people of the, whom thou art afraid. Moreover, the Lord thy God will send the hornet among them until they that are left and hide themselves from thee, be destroyed. Thou shalt not be affrighted at them, for the Lord thy God is among you, a mighty God and terrible. Amen. God's on your side. Amen? Amen? That's basically what he says. You notice in verse 17, he says the phrase, if they say in their hearts. You know, that phrase is talking about being directed by your emotions. You know, many times we let our emotions dictate our actions. You ever have that happen? You ever get mad and you get so mad and you do something you're like, ooh, I wish I didn't do that. Yeah. But now it's too late. Yeah. Now I need to ask forgiveness. Yeah. And thank goodness for forgiveness. Amen? Amen? That's called the flesh getting the best of you. Yes, sir. It happens to all of us. Yeah. That doesn't mean it's okay, but it happens to all of us. But that's why Jeremiah said this about our hearts. The prophet Jeremiah said, Jeremiah 17, 9, the heart is deceitful above all things and desperately yeah. wicked. Who can know it? Don't trust your emotions. That's right. That's the lesson. You get mad, you get angry, you give it to God before you open your mouth. Amen. Our trouble's coming. <laughs> That's our lesson. Our emotions can be, can and will cloud our judgments. And one of our biggest emotions that seem to do that very thing is fear. You ever let fear get a hold, best, a hold of you? You know, fear can tear you apart. Do all kinds of damage. You know, notice in verse 18, he's basically saying that Israel should not fear them and what they could do, but rather fear God and what God will do. Amen. Basically, they needed to continue, continually be thinking about all the signs and wonders and miracles that God performed so far. He is a powerful God. In order to keep them fearing God above all the mere men that are out there, those are just men. Yeah, they may be nine foot six, just men. Yeah. David takes a little rock and he's going to knock them down. So can you. Actually, David didn't knock them down, did he? Who knocked them down? God. God. 
God said, I'm going to go before you. Can I help you out? Every battle that's in your life, no matter how big it is, it's not that you can do anything about it, but God sure can. And that's something to always remember. Did you know that Jesus Christ told every believer the same thing? In Matthew chapter 10 and verse 28, he said, Fear not them that kill the body, but are not able to kill the uh, soul, but rather fear him which is able to destroy both body, both soul and body in hell. You need to know that you're saved by God's grace. You need to know that God Almighty, God who created everything, is on your side. Amen. You don't need to fear anything else but God. Once you know God is on your side, once you know you've given it up to Him, He will destroy every enemy that's out there. Paul reminds every true believer not to fear anything because we are now the children of God. Romans 8, verse 15. I love this one. For ye have not received the spirit of bondage again to fear, but ye have received the spirit of adoption whereby we cry, Abba, Father. Yeah. We're in Him. Amen? Amen? Also, he told Timothy, this wonderful truth about fear, 2 Timothy 1, verse 7. For God hath not given us a spirit of fear, but of power and love and a sound mind. It's all coming from God. Amen. We don't have to fear anything. Every one of us today should always think of our God as the one who spoke the world into existence. I spoke it. He just said, let it be, and it came. Amen. That's our God. And that one day, he will destroy this world and all of the universe by just speaking to it. Yeah. So the word of God is powerful. And hopefully this will keep our minds on just how important it is for us to keep his word because it is powerful. Yes, sir. Israel has now been given a sure word of God that if they will just obey his word, he will defeat all their enemies before them. Amen. And if they will get rid of everything God told them to get rid of, that they would be uh, blessed beyond measure by God. Likewise, every believer has the ability to defeat all the enemies that surround you if we just simply obey God's word. Mm -hmm. Philippians 4, verse 13, I can do all things through Christ which strengthens oh, me. Okay. You know, many people have twisted that very verse and thinking that whatever they want to do, they can do it as long as they do it in Jesus' name. I'm going to win this football game because... God is with me. I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. Amen. So I'm winning now. That's not what the verse means. It's telling us, this verse is telling us that what, whatever God tells me to do, I can do whatever he tells me to do because God will always enable me to do what he's called me to do. Can I help? Yeah. Amen. Amen, brother. I can do all things. God said do it, I can do it. Why? Because God's doing it for me. That's the power of God. You know, Israel is successful when they put to practice these words of God. The believer today will be successful when we put to practice these words of God. In fact, I'm going to close with this real quick. What are some ways we can put to practice the word of God today? Anybody got a clue? Study our Bible. Come to church, pray, witness. That seems to be everything that the Bible says to do. Repent when we sin because we're going to sin. Get right with God. Be obedient to his calling. He tells you to do it, do it. That's obeying God's word. So if we know our enemies, and if we know our strengths and weaknesses, then we can know where victory is found, which is in our obedience to Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Our most gracious Heavenly Father, we thank you, we praise you for this day. Lord, may you continue to be with us, guide us and direct us, help us through every situation that we have in life. Always help us to remember that you are in control of everything. Lord, may you guide us, may you direct us, may you strengthen us, may you lift us up and help us to do all of these things we learned about to do. Lord, help us to bring honor and glory to your wonderful name by being obedient to your word. We thank you, we praise you in Jesus' name. Amen.